You are listening to Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets with Naomi Rose, the food business talk show that shares with you the reality of what's happening in the food and hospitality industry. I am on a mission to help as many people as possible grow and build successful food businesses. Each week on this podcast, you'll get useful information, top tips, as well as what's really happening in the kitchen behind the scenes. Let's get on to today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of the year of Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets. I'm your host, Naomi, and I am going to be answering your questions today because it's a and a So I've been asking you what you would like answered this week on the podcast. So I've got a handful of questions that people want to know the answer to, but don't necessarily make an entire podcast episode. So I'm going to get on to those today. Before I do, I want to talk to you about a couple of things. My first really, really exciting thing is that my new cookbook, Whisk, Mix, Knead, Bake, is going to be out next week. And it's got over 80 recipes of scones, cakes, bread, buns, pastry, all sorts of stuff that I have been sharing with you over the past few months and lots of new recipes as well. So I'd love for you to go and grab a copy of that. You know what? It's nearly Christmas. You need a secret Santa gift. This is an excellent one for that person who loves to bake. So go and visit my website, bakingboss.net. Get on that wait list and you'll be the very first to know when it is actually released. So it's going to be great. And I'm really looking forward to sharing that all with you and hearing what you think. So tell me what you think, because this will be the first, I hope, of many books. So do let me know what you think and what you might want to see in the next one. The second thing I want to tell you about is my one-to-one power hours. Now, these are really great 60-minute Zoom sessions with me if you've got a few things you just need to run through. So the power hours can be used for anything from how to get your side hustle into a full-time business. Maybe you want to get your marketing sorted out because working out the social medias, the emails, all of those sorts of things, it's a lot. So I want you to use these power hours to help you get more sales into your business because that's what it's all about. Getting more customers, getting more footfall or getting going. Maybe you just need some advice on how to scale up your bakes or how much to bake. (laughs) It's a bit of a myth at the beginning of how to figure that out or how to work out your menu. These are what these power hours are for. And they're £100 for one hour, which is a really, really good deal. I made them affordable because I want to help you get to where you want to be in 2024. So whether you're starting up or whether you just want to grow and you need a bit of advice, then come and book yourself a session with me because I'd love to talk to you and love to help you get your business right. The reason I'm doing Power Hours is because I did start my business with no help, absolutely no help. I winged it. I winged it for about 18 months. I probably winged it actually for five years. It was so hard and I had so much self-doubt. Looking back now, if I could have paid someone £100 for 60 minutes of expert advice to get the answers I needed to some questions, I would have totally done it. It would have been so worth the investment and saved me so much time. So if you want to get a bit of help with your business, help get set up, I have someone that you can ask the questions to that you're really not sure on the answers, then go and book yourself this power hour. You can go to my website or just drop me a DM at naomi at bakingboss.net and I'll send you the link. Okay, so today's episode Q&A. So what question am I going to start with first? This is a great question and one which I'm not even sure I really have a proper answer to, but when did you know you were ready to quit your job and open a cafe? Well, I think the only honest answer I have for that, I didn't. I absolutely didn't know I was ready. I had an idea, I had an opportunity, and I started talking about it, which meant that then suddenly this idea was becoming an actual thing. And I didn't want to be that person that was someone that talked about something and then didn't take action. I didn't want to lose face. I didn't want to be the person that kind of had this idea of this dream and it was always just a dream. I wanted to be the person that took action and did something and made choices rather than just thought about making choices. I honestly didn't think I ever really knew I was ready, even throughout the entire setup of the business, because it it was a lot. If anyone is opening a cafe or has opened a cafe in a building which is different from your house or even in a home bakery, starting up and getting set up is a lot mentally and physically and I doubted myself I had 
many, many doubts along the way of what I was doing. Understanding how to get the business set up was a minefield. I had no idea what I was doing. It was really scary. But I was too far down the line by the time I started it to change my mind. And I didn't want to be the person that just got scared. I didn't want fear to stop me from moving forward. And I spent most of that first 15 months of my business being completely uncomfortable. I was well out of my comfort zone. I just kind of had this line running in the back of my head that said, greatness comes from being uncomfortable. You don't get great things from staying in that comfort zone. You will always get what you've always had if you do the same thing over and over again. So if you want to develop and grow and do something that you love, you just got to do it. You've got to put your fears aside and just have faith. And that's why I had a plan. I had a plan on paper. I had a spreadsheet. It was a thing that kept me on track. If I held on to this plan, it was like my life. It was like my life jacket. But if I just took it step by step, logically, put my own irrational emotions to one side and just focused on this plan, I knew that it would get there in the end. So yes, there wasn't a perfect time to quit my job. And I didn't know I was ready. If you're thinking of doing that, and you're not sure when to do it, the time to do it is when you do it. It's like people say, when's the best time to post on social media? When you post. Just give it a go. Try it. You know, you can you can do risk assessments. You can go backwards and forwards and think, oh, what happens if it fails? What happens if I lose money? These are all things that I, in the end, kind of went, I'm making up excuses now. I'm giving myself limits. Yes, I might lose money, but you can always earn more money. There's plenty of money out there to earn. What if you didn't give it a go? What if you were so f- afraid of f- fear, fear of failure that you didn't give it a go? It doesn't matter if you get things wrong. You are. You absolutely are. I got loads of things wrong. It's fine. It's a learning curve. So there is no absolute time to do it. If you have an opportunity in front of you, then go for it. If that's what you really, really want to do, just give it a go and see where you end up. OK, next question. How much money did you need to start a cafe? Ooh, now I like this question because how long is a piece of string? <laughs> it really does depend on your business. However much you need might be completely different to somebody else's needs. And sometimes you think, I'll just start small. I'll start with a small business at home and then I'll grow it from there. The question I really want to ask you here, actually, even though it's your Q&A, but I'm going to ask you a question, is why are you starting small? What is it? Are you afraid that you'll be too you financially wouldn't be able to do it. I think if you have a plan, and this is my belief, and I believe it's a lot of it's true of a lot of business owners. If you have a plan and you're determined to, to do something, money shouldn't be the things that stops you from getting there. Because there are many ways to get investments into a cafe. There are many ways to get investments into a baking business. I mean, I crowdfunded mine. I got grant funding for mine. I went, you know, the local councils in the UK have grants all the time for small business owners to get started because they back businesses, because they want people employed in this country. So if you're starting a business and your goal is to grow it, why would they not support you doing that? That, So there are so many options available. You just got to know where to find them. So what I would do, if you were thinking about starting up, a cafe or a home business, think about the cost. I want you to just go and work out the numbers. When you've got the numbers in front of you, you can then see clearly exactly what you're doing and what you need to do and whether it's viable. When you look at your numbers, you've got facts and you can work with facts. And then that way that starts to help form your business plan. So if you're thinking of starting up from home and then going into an actual building, just bear in mind, you're going to have two setup costs. You're going to have to set up two different businesses. I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's it's your business. You decide what works for you and how you can do it. But what are you gaining by starting from home versus doing it in an actual physical building? If it's about thinking, well, I'll build up my clients or I'll build up my customers first, I'll get some income and then that will pay for the actual business. I want you to think about then, if you're going to start at home, how much you need to earn to get you to where you need to be. And then you can work out what funding might be available to help you there or where there might be an investment. Because when you're looking at the numbers and when you're thinking of scaling up, the only person, only numbers that matters are your numbers. 
because rent is different, staff costs are different. Depending on your setup, you'll need different people. Everybody's business is built differently. So how much you need depends on what you're planning on doing. But what you want to start with is looking at those numbers, thinking about what you need to earn, what profit you need to make, how much you need to sell, how many customers you need. These are the things that are going to really, really help you get to working out exactly what you need to start up. If you ask any business owner that started a business from scratch, and this was certainly my experience, put a contingency in there. Um, mine was about, I think my, my contingency ended up being about 15% of what I thought I needed in my budget to get started because I knew there was stuff I didn't know. There was so much stuff I didn't know. When you difference in commercial to business, uh, sorry, from consumer to business is everything does tend to cost more. So whatever you think, have a contingency. Then you're prepared. You can expect what's going to happen next. It just helps. So that would be my advice. There is how much do you need? Whatever it is you need. <laughs> it's, just, it's not really any other answer, but you just have to crunch your numbers. Hey, look, I get it. The numbers are horrible. I'm not a fan of numbers, but I have done it and I have done it several times. I did it for the bakery. I did it for the bar. I did it for the cafe and I redid all my numbers in various different points of my business to work up how to scale up or how to change it up. Like I say, I've got power hours. So if you kind of like, I just don't know how to figure this all out, grab a power hour with me, come and grab some time. An hour with me will probably save you about two or three weeks of pain. Next question, how much should I bake when you're just starting out and you have no idea how many customers you're going to get in? This was a question I asked when I opened up the cafe many times and I had my team, my kitchen team, and we did a best guesstimate. To be honest, there was no right or wrong answer here. I kind of based it on a couple of things. I worked out because I worked out my finances, so I knew how many customers I would need in the door every day that paid, paid an average. So I can't remember what the average was. It was about £12 per couple a day. That would be their average because it'd be basically a couple of coffees, probably a slice of cake and a scone. But that would be roughly what I thought the average person would spend. So then I knew exactly how much I would need to earn, how much footfall I would need in every day. And then I worked backwards from there of how much I actually needed to bake, what would be best sellers, what prep I would need to do. So it actually really started with the end game. And when we went through everything that we needed to make and bake, on the first day, I think we baked more than we thought because we wanted to go in prepared. So we pre over prepped because we didn't want the first day to be w winging it any more than it needed to be. But then what we actually decided was we're going to bake less because if we sell out, we don't have wastage. And actually, you know what, that's a good advertising thing. Yes, we sold out. Amazing. Great. Doesn't matter how much we baked, but we say, I'm really sorry, sold out that come back another day. I don't think there's anything wrong in selling out. We made stuff fresh. That was our thing. We baked everything fresh. We did it. Everything we did was fresh. There was nothing wrong in saying we've run out. That kind of was part of the business brand was the fact that we did make all our own bakes and did it all ourselves by hand. So go get in early if you want to go and get the good cake. That's just how it worked. So think about how many people are going to be coming through the doors, how much you have to sell, and then you can work it out from there. Work out how many customers you think you're going to get through the door and that will help you then work out how much you need to prep. But start simple. Don't, don't do big, big menus that you can't manage. Look at how much time you've got. You're not going to have as much time as you think. So think about how much prep time you have and how you can maximise that. And then you can work out how much you need to bake. So you can always start smaller and then make more. But what you don't want to end up doing is having loads and loads of wastage at the end. And hey, if you want to bake in bulk, you can absolutely bake cakes and put them in the freezer. Your freezer is your friend. So you can make stuff in advance and freeze it down. So it saves you time later on. This is about being efficient and serving people in the best way possible. Right, the final question. And this is a this is a really good question to ask, actually. And one I got asked in my masterclass at the Cake and Bake Show this year. But someone asked me, you close your cafe at the beginning of the year, yet you're telling us how to start our businesses. Would you open another cafe again? That's a really good question, actually. And the answer I said at the time was yes. And absolutely, I would, I would open another cafe. But I'm not going to. And the reason is that 
I closed my business because operationally and financially, the location and the time and the place, everything could come at all the wrong moments. And it just got to a point where it's no longer financially viable. And I've spoken about that before in previous podcasts. I've spoken to it in the media as well. I've talked about it quite openly. And it wasn't that my business model didn't work. And I have, as you can imagine, anybody that closes a business or anyone that has something that doesn't work out the way they imagine spends a lot of time going over everything. And I went over everything. And ultimately, it came down to at the end of the day, it was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I couldn't fight a global economic crisis at that moment in my how it, and how it affected my town because everywhere got affected differently. It really knocked my town and it really affected the footfall. And I can absolutely, almost to the day, know exactly when it all changed. Everything that had happened before, all the customers, all of that loyalty that I built up, that was still there to the end. Just people's buying behaviour had changed. And it was a really expensive building to be in. So the, built, the business was actually operational. It just wasn't operational anymore in that location. I, you know, I looked at doing other things like I could go online, I can do scone deliveries and things like that. I looked into all of that. It was the wrong location to do that operation. So it's not that I wouldn't do the business again and I would move it somewhere else. I considered all of those things, but I decided my skill set was actually best best helping people get their businesses right because I had done it the hard way. I'd done it by myself. I couldn't find someone. That's why I started Baking Boss because I know how tough it is as a business owner. It can be quite isolating. It can be quite lonely. And you don't have anyone to ask these questions to that you can get answers from. I never found anything like that. You know, we all, we don't want to lose face and talk about how our businesses aren't doing as well as we think they might be. But sometimes you just need someone to be in your corner and champion you. And that's what I want to do because I love baking businesses. I love the food industry. I think there is so much great home cooks out there that just don't get the opportunity to do what they love. And I believe everyone should have the opportunity to do what they love. So that is why I created Baking Boss. And I could have totally gone and opened another place somewhere else in a different location, in a different operation, but it wasn't what I really wanted to do anymore. I wanted to be able to help other people have the opportunity that I had. So that's that's why I decided, you know, if you want to find out more about how I closed my business and what I did to do that, then I can t- let me know. I'll talk about it on the podcast because I think it's really useful for people to understand all aspects of business from start to finish. And look, if if you're thinking of starting a business or you think you're growing a business and you're worried about failure or having to close, you may have to. Plenty of res- restaurant owners some of the most famous restaurant owners, most successful, have opened and closed businesses, opened and closed locations in the last five years, 10 years. They've all done it. Are they bad at what they do? No, no, they're far from it. It just was, wasn't quite the right place at the right time. And you won't know that unless you try it. But they tried it and found out. And sometimes it's just about giving things a go. And if it doesn't work out, there are always other things to do. If fear is the one thing that's holding you back, then think about, do you want to be that person that wants to be held back by fear? Because I was held back by fear for so long and I didn't need to be. I could have taken action a long time ago and I didn't. And I should have done. And now I, you know, I take action every single day to grow my business and make it better every single day so I can help more people because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help people. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your Q&A session. This I quite like this one. So if you want to have questions answered on my podcast, come and ping me a question and I'll do another one of these Q&As again in the future. But for now, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Don't forget, I've got an excellent Secret Santa gift coming up with my new book, Whisk, Mix, Knead, Bake. So go and get on the wait list to be the first to know about that. And if you want to get your business off the ground in 2024, book a power hour. Let's get it sorted because I really want to help you get there. Go visit my website, bakingboss.net. Drop me a message at I am Baking Boss or Naomi at Baking Boss because I would love to hear from you. What are you getting up to this Christmas? Tell me. Until next year, folks, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, a great new year, and as ever, happy baking.
Thank you for listening to Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets with Naomi Rose. If you're enjoying this podcast, then please do give it a review. And don't forget to subscribe and follow. If you want to get some useful resources, then do visit my website, bakingboss.net. And give me a follow on social media at Naomi Rose Baking Boss and I am Baking Boss. We'll see you on the next episode.